Well, welcome back to Morning Coffee, everybody, here on the Radio Vision Network. I am Mark Cook, and this is Read All About It. This is a segment we do every Thursday where we get to talk to a really interesting author about some books that he's written and about their lives. Uh, Benita Lee is not with us this morning, but sitting in for her is Mr. Keith Reynolds. Good morning, Keith. How are you today? Good, Mark. How's it going, man? It's going all right. We had a pretty good show. The boss was in. I don't know if you saw that. Breakfast with the Boss, yes, Scott, Tanker. Scott Tanker. Scott Tanker. Always great. So Absolutely. I'm excited about uh, who we're about to talk to this morning because he's not just an author. He's, a, he's an historian. He is an expert on a lot of different things, and most specifically the Civil War. And it, it's just my honor and pleasure to bring him on to the show right now. His name is Alan Mesh. Good morning, Alan. Welcome. Good morning, Mark. Hi, Keith. Good morning, Alan. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to talk with you about one of my favorite subjects, yeah. the American Civil War. Yeah, well, it's really, uh, it's it's our pleasure, actually, for, for you to be here, and uh, you, you've traveled a long way to be with us today, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit about you personally first. You hail from Plano, Texas. Plano, Texas uh, is a northern suburb of Dallas, and I should say that very quietly. quietly. Yes, you know you're in the Philadelphia I'm area. I'm in Philadelphia Eagle and uh, somewhat New York Giant territory, right, so I'm absolutely. going to be very respectful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, we've been there, oh my gosh, uh, over 30 years in that area, raised uh, uh, two uh, two kids and uh, helping to raise uh, six grandchildren. Wow, nice. wonderful. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And my wife and I just this last year celebrated our 50th anniversary. All right. Of, Congratulations. Uh, thank you That's very excellent. Much. We, we had a, we've had quite a nice life together. Um, where do I come from? Well, I actually hail uh, from Buffalo, New York. So I'm a Yankee, uh, transported down to uh, oil and gas country, and uh, I found myself there first working uh, for Gulf Oil in Pittsburgh, and then going to where all the action is, uh, Houston, and then uh, and then Dallas. And um, my career has really been a mix of both working in, if you will, the real world, and then also working uh, in uh, academic positions and I was figuring it out uh, on the way this morning that I probably taught nearly 40 years in one place or another as wow. an adjunct professor while holding down uh, a full-time job in the uh, oil and gas industry so wow, that's it's been wow. it's been a, a kind of an amazing journey it's quite impressive thank you thank you and uh, that's one of the things that kind of got me interested in this particular book, uh, uh, Teacher of Civil War Generals. But uh, the, my story really begins uh, a little bit earlier when I started finding out about these Civil War battlefields that were under threat. And I became uh, rather concerned about that and said to my wife, hey, you know, if we're going to go see these, uh, and be able to visit and enjoy and learn more about them, we need to do it now. And so I started, uh, we started our journey at uh, Harrisburg at the Civil War, National Civil War Museum there, which is an excellent museum, and I recommend if you can start your Civil War journey there. Yeah, start there and then go right to Gettysburg. Go to you're Gettysburg. Gonna have the, you're going to have the best experience because you're going to go to the museum first and then you're going to go to one of the most famous sites of the entire war. It, it, absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Gettysburg is kind of like jumping into a deep, deep part of the pool. Yeah. So it's, it's a complex battlefield. Uh, I generally recommend people start at something a little more sim simplistic, uh, a little more manageable to, right. to be able to see. But going there, uh, as far as the first site, is good because you know what? You can always come back. I've been to Gettysburg, I think, three times now. And each time I've seen some different things and enjoyed uh, learning about some aspect of the battlefield that I was not aware of. So I think that 
just because you've gone to a place once doesn't mean you can't come back. Right, there's always still more to learn, definitely. Absolutely, and the new parts of, the, of battlefields are being uh, taken over by organizations like the Civil War Trust, which does a remarkable job at reclaiming uh, commercial sites and t turning them into uh, places where you can visit. So, uh, well, that's great because I think what you're talking about is like the historical preservation of a lot of these battlefields that right. were, I, I think what you were mentioning a, a second ago is that you felt threatened that they were going to not honor them as landmarks, they were going to close some of the parks, they were going to modify, you know, what they allowed the public to use as that space. And, and I think that, you know, your miss mission ended up becoming twofold. It was look, we've got to get out and see these things before they change. And right. you know what? There's got to be a little bit of preservation here, too. And I think that sharing your stories helps people understand how important it is that we keep this preserved for even future generations to come. Right. History is, uh, is very important. And I think it helps us put things in perspective. You know, we've gone through a civil war and have come out on the other side of that in pretty good shape. That does not always happen in the history of the world. Civil wars uh, can be ongoing and they can result in the country uh, being severed. Right. And so we, we have to feel fortunate that we've been able to do that. Well, since that humble start, we've been to about 145 different sites around the country. Wow. And. Uh, it started out that I was just going to take some pictures and share with my family, and it turned into a website that I uh, have those pictures that are f free to use and encourage people to use, whether they be school children doing projects or uh, other speakers needing a picture for one of their presentations. Well, that's great. We live on the internet here. I, I'd love to give everybody that website, if you don't oh, mind. Oh, sure, sure. It's uh, civilwarjourneys.org, and there's a dash between civil war and journeys, okay? So it's civil-war-journeys.org. It's a dot .org. Okay, cool. And that's so, yes, yeah, awesome. please go and visit that. In addition, I do a uh, a blog called uh, Salient Points uh, that uh, picks up various uh, topics, uh, no matter what they may be, whether they be uh, uh, removing uh, Confederate uh, symbols in uh, state and, and universities. Uh, oh, sites that's a constant battle. And uh, or uh, you know places we visit or uh, events that uh, that we hear about. So it, it's always exciting. Yeah, that's really, it, it, it's, it, it's just kind of amazing. And when I hear all of the things that you take on, I always, I always wonder, like, do you sleep? Do you have time to sleep? I mean, now you're traveling <laughs> the country, you're talking about your books, and you've got all this stuff going on. Sleep later, right? We'll worry about well, that later. I, you know, I, part of my effort in writing these books was to illustrate to people uh, it's maybe an ad for the AARP that just because you're 55 and can be a member doesn't mean you you don't have a lot of value to contribute. That's right. And uh, you know people say, well, do you do all these things to keep your mind active? And I say, my mind is quite active. Thank you very much. Yeah. I spend uh, probably uh, some days as many as 10 hours a day doing research and writing and and, and studying. Uh, You're running circles around these kids, you know that, right? <laughs> yeah, well, my wife says, uh, I just retired from my uh, oil and gas consulting business beginning this year. And my wife says, you know, you're working harder now than you ever did. <laughs> I say, well, it's just how, uh, that's, it's that's just me. How I mean, I keep on thinking about cutting back, and I go, well, what am I going to do when I cut back? Yeah, <laughs> keep going, keep exactly. going. Exactly, and I've just been... Uh, Select, and I'm very, very proud of this. I've just been selected to the advisory board for our local library system there in uh, in Plano. Oh, fantastic! Congratulations. Thank that's you. that's excellent. Preservation of our libraries is one of the greatest causes out there. I, it, it has I to agree. happen. I agree, and I've had so many wonderful experiences talking at uh, 
at various libraries. I'm going to be in Pittsburgh talking at the Carnegie Library in Carnegie, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's very okay. historic. Uh, yeah, library. that is one of the most famous libraries in the country. That yes. that is awesome, Alan. It, we it, like we could just keep going and going and going, but unfortunately, I have to take a quick break. We've got some commercials we've got to run. Got to okay? pay the bills. That's right. <laughs> so we'll we'll take we'll take a break and we come back. We got to jump into the books here. We got to show everybody the books. We got to tell everybody how to get them because because they're awesome. So here's what you need to do. You need to stay right there for just a couple quick minutes, and we will be right back here on Read All About It on Morning Coffee on the Radio Vision Network. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Simply Gents, located in Marlton, New Jersey, takes care of all your grooming needs, including haircuts, straight razor shaves, massages, facial, manicures, pedicures, and waxing. To find more information or book an appointment, visit us online at www.simplygents.com. The secret weapon of a well-groomed man, Simply Gents. If you haven't been to Speed Raceway, what are you waiting for? You want to live fast? You want to make every second count? Then grab the family. Round up the guys. Speed Raceway is 100,000 square feet of excitement, whether you're a kid or a kid at heart. Speed Raceway is the place for endless fun all summer long. Log on to SpeedRaceway.com or just get here now. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to make a really great sub, this is what we do. It's what we've been doing. It's what we've always done. It's what we'll always do. So what are you doing? Jersey Mike's, be a sub above. Today's show was brought to you by Alicia Kelly of Whitehorse RV Center in Williamstown, New Jersey. Alicia is your RV expert. Contact Alicia at alicia at whitehorserv.com or give her a call at 856-262-1717, extension 203. When you think of RV, think Alicia Kelly. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Welcome back to Morning Coffee, everyone. I am Mark Cook. This is the Radio Vision Network, and this is Keith Reynolds. And yo, Keith. We're really lucky because we get to talk to a lot of interesting people here uh, at One Morning Coffee and read all about it and, and just Radio Vision in general, right? But I feel really lucky that we have Alan Mesh with us here today because he is just the stories that I'm hearing and, and I hope we can get to all of them on the air because I've heard a couple off the air and it, it, it's just, you're just such an interesting man and I really want to thank you again for spending a few minutes with us today. Uh, because we have to talk about these books. And when I heard the story about uh, the books, this is crazy. Do you remember how long he, he told you this book was when he first wrote the first draft? Was it 3,000? 300,000. 300,000 words. 300,000 words, which, you know, I looked at other biographies and, you know, Lee, Grant, etc., and they were all long, and I figured, well, I should be able to write that. Well, <laughs> that doesn't work that way, folks. <laughs> uh, the, the magic number is 100,000 or less, and I was very fortunate in finding an absolutely terrific publisher, a McFarland company, and they are terrific. I would encourage any would-be author to go to their webpage and look at the variety of titles. And they're absolutely fantastic people to work with. Uh, I, it, it was probably the most painless process. And I've talked to other authors about publishing. Mm 
Yeah, and that's, a, that's important to mention because a, a lot of people start with the intention of writing a book with the best intentions, and unfortunately they get to the publishing phase, and it's really overwhelming, it's really daunting, and it's really just challenging and difficult. Uh, so to hear that your experience was very smooth and easy, that, that's a wonderful thing. That makes, that makes this that much more special. And it's called Teacher of Civil War Generals, and it's about Major General Charles Ferguson Smith. Now, I, I want to know specifically why you chose this general to be the feature. Well, I was at Fort Donaldson as part of our uh, travels around Civil War sites, and I read about uh, Smith, and I read that he was a mentor of U.S. General Grant. And I said, well, this is uh, pretty neat. Not only was he a teacher, because he was Commandant of Cadets at West Point. So he was one of the most important figures in training of junior officers in the Army. And he also had a profound influence in the way he carried himself and uh, his various deport deportment. Um, and so I said, well, this guy has something. You know, I have something in common with this guy. <laughs> I've been a teacher and I've been a practitioner, and I get accused of being leaning one way or the other depending on what audience I'm with. <laughs> right. And so I said, I've got to read a book about him. And so I just looked to find a book. There were no books at all about Major General Smith. None. None? None. So you were, you were finding like blurbs in a textbook, basically. I was finding a, a word here, a word there. Right. I found a uh, a uh, bachelor's thesis that was done at uh, LSU, and uh, that was it. And I said, well, this is ridiculous. So I said, well, heck, I'm an engineer. You know engineers, we engineers are just arrogant SOBs. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we really are. You guys can do anything, right? <laughs> we yeah. can do anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, really. And we think that, uh, oh, there's no task that's uh, too big that we can't handle. So I said, you know, I'll write the book. How hard can it be? Well, that's quite a joke, of course. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's written knows how difficult it is. Well, I started out and we went to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, which has a wonderful, wonderful museum there and great library. And I encourage anyone uh, traveling across Pennsylvania to make a stop at Carlisle. It's, it's absolutely terrific. They have an indoor museum and also an outdoor Museum with various structures. Yeah, and that's not far from Philadelphia. If you're, you know, if you're in that area, you're only about an hour away from Carlisle, and you can get there pretty easily. And they're and they're wonderful people to work with. Well, we were there doing some research. I say we, my wife and myself. I was looking through books, and she was taking pictures of the pages that I thought were interesting. We talked to the head librarian, and he said, you know you ought to check up at West Point, because I found that they had 12 items. And I said, oh, neat. We'll go up there for, you know, spend a morning looking at the 12 items, and we'll go do some touring. And some sightseeing, sightseeing, right? We'll there. have lunch, and right. Exactly. exactly. You know, it'll be a fun thing to do. Yeah. We get up there, and it's not 12 items. Of course, you have to get permission. These are special collections. You just can't walk in. We sent emails, got permission. And went up there, and it wasn't 12 pieces of paper, it was 12 boxes. Wow. Absolute oh. gold mine <laughs> of information. Personal letters that he sent to his family, uh, that he received from other people, communications with General Grant, uh, all kinds of wonderful oh. letters that he had written about his life and experiences, including his journals. Oh, wow. So it's like, oh my God. Uh, and at this point you go, please God, don't let me screw this up, because you know there's a wealth of information, yeah, right. and you felt a strong obligation to do the right thing. To do it justice, right? Exactly. Yeah. His daughter had tried to write, put together a book on General Smith, and she was uh, actually had enlisted uh, the help of William Smith, who's from uh, this area, and um, was not able to do that for a variety of personal uh, situations that occurred. So I said, okay, I've got to really do this right. And over the course of writing it, I mean, I was going to write it as a, a novel, a buddy novel type of story. Right. 
and Ed Bowers, who anybody, who, anyone who knows about the American Civil War knows that the, uh, he's a historian emeritus with the uh, National Park Service. Uh, he convinced me basically with a comment he made not to make it a fictional book, and so right. it went right to the nonfiction treatment. And it just was, uh, you know, it was a labor of love. And the more we learned about Smith, uh, and the more we regard him not as some mystical figure, but as a, an affectionate a uncle, man, a man, a family a, man, a family man, and somebody who you would love like you loved a favorite uncle. Okay? Yeah. And so that from that was like, oh wow, this is magical, and his story is magical. You can take away his Civil War experience. And you go from when he was a commandant and all the officers that he trained who were in the American Civil War, like 85 generals, he personally trained. Wow. And from there you go to his experiences. Actually, uh, he was called into the Philadelphia area to do some work at Frankfurt Armory. Then he went to the Mexican-American War. He was the uh, hero of the Battle of, of Monterey and received a sword from the city of Philadelphia for that. You know, thank oh, that's you. great. We got a thank Philly you. connection with this oh, guy. Very definitely. Nice. I like that. You know that Frankfurt Army, that's on Frankfurt Avenue. Right. right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was kind of, that was kind of a joke. <laughs> I think there's something still there. He was from this area. He can, when uh, he was uh, signing his oath of allegiance after receiving his promotion to Brigadier General, he said that I am a proud Philadelphia, Pennsylvania resident, even though I haven't been there for virtually my whole life. You know, <laughs> wow. I've been elsewhere. Nice. So this is funny, right? We talked about how the original draft of this book was 300,000 words. I don't want anyone to be intimidated because it's formatted very very nicely it's got it's got a lot of text and information but it also is amplified by some images and maps and and all sorts of things it's really a great book and i want you uh to pick it up teacher of civil war generals by alan mesh and, and but talking about the draft of the three hundred thousand words that might have something to do with this which i want to tell you guys about coming up. We're going to take another break real quick. Okay. We'll hang through it and then we will be right back here on Read All About It on the Radio Vision Network. Stay right there. Today's show is sponsored by Hardgrove Demolition, your demolition experts. Hardgrove is a family owned and operated business right here in the southern New Jersey area bringing you 45 years of demolition expertise. Hardgrove has all your demolition needs from emergency demolition service to demolition equipment rental. Hardgrove is one of the state approved recycling facilities right here in the southern New Jersey area. No job is too big or too small for Hardgrove Demolition. Contact them today at one of their three locations. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. If you haven't been to Speed Raceway, what are you waiting for? You want to live fast? You want to make every second count? Then grab the family. Round up the guys. Speed Raceway is 100,000 square feet of excitement, whether you're a kid or a kid at heart. Speed Raceway is the place for endless fun all summer long. Log on to SpeedRaceway.com or just get here now. When we make Beyond Natural Dry Dog and Cat Foods, we start with real meat as the first ingredient. We leave out corn, wheat, and soy. And we own where our dry food is made, 100%. Can other brands say all that? For nutrition you can trust and your pet will enjoy. Does your food go beyond? 
Learn more at PurinaBeyond.com. Extra Innings is the nation's premier indoor baseball and softball training center featuring indoor batting cages, seven multi-use tunnels, and training rooms. Extra Innings can provide professional instruction, private and group lessons, and the best year-round clinics. Along with a nationally recognized pro shop that features the latest and widest selection of equipment and apparel, our experienced staff can provide you with the right instruction and help you find the best equipment for your ability and budget. Extra Innings, where the game never ends. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Martha, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Welcome back to Morning Coffee on the Radio Vision Network. I'm like talking a mile a minute off the air. I almost screwed up that break coming back. I, I'm just really, I, I'm kind of overwhelmed because I know that sitting to, to my left is a great guy and, and Keith Reynolds, everybody, is, is sitting here, but sitting to my right, I, I'm just so, I, I, you're just so interesting and I feel like you're so easy to talk to about such really important stuff that that's kind of lost on a lot of people sometimes is that this stuff is important to you, but you're talking to me in a way that is making me really excited and interested about it, and that's what we need to do to our children to make sure that that is what carries on the excitement about the art history. And you know what they say about history, folks? If you don't learn about it, if you don't know it, right? Right, you're gonna repeat it. And, and uh, I, I have suggested on a couple of occasions that every one of the people in our national government should be forced to take a couple weeks of American history to remind them so totally of agree. where we came totally from. Totally agree. Uh, that's the it's biggest, the least they could do. Absolutely. And you know what, I think it's the biggest problem facing us in today's world is we don't know our history. Exactly you know, we right. We really don't. Exactly right. I get questions even from my own grandchildren about that very issue. Um, you know, I think that if you can bring history to life, and I was uh, at uh, the uh, GAR Museum, the Grand Army of the Republic Museum in Philadelphia uh, last Sunday, and a gentleman came up and he said, you know, I've attended some of these meetings. I wasn't really very interested in the Civil War, but after hearing your talk, I really got interested and excited about it. That's the nicest thing yeah, you can say to right? any author, any speaker. Um, well, we talked a little bit about the first book, and from that, I had all these wonderful stories. And I really didn't have room in the first book, Teachers Civil War Journals, to do it. Well, let's tell them what happened. Okay. So I said, you know, what am I going to do? I didn't think anybody would be interested in publishing a smaller book, because it's not really a, a novel size book or a nonfiction book. It's under 100,000 words. But the stories were wonderful. And so I said, okay, I'm going to take the letters that he wrote to his daughter, Fanny, and put them into a book with a little bit of, you know, scene setting as you went through it. And they start uh, when Smith is about to go on an expedition to the Red River of the North uh, up in Minnesota and cross over all of these rivers and build bridges and then go undergo some real hardships. Uncharted territory. Oh yes, absolutely. And the letters continued through a, a part of American history that very few people know about and that's the Mormon campaign or Mormon war where the U.S. sent soldiers to kind of put down a quasi-rebellion in the Utah Territory and, and install federal officials. There were no shots fired. Nobody was killed. That's why we didn't learn about it. That's why. I don't remember maybe that that's at why all. you yeah. didn't learn about it exactly. And the stories that he tells about that, and the feelings that he shares with his daughter about what was going on in the war, and also the descriptions of the people that he saw, very very interesting. But. Even as he's telling these stories, as a, a father would relate to a child, he's also giving her advice. And he's saying, I want you to take French. And then she's taking French, and he says, now, try writing me a letter in French, you know? 
Parlez-vous Francais? Obviously, he knew French because he had to take it when he was at West Point because right. all the military books were in French. So he was quite fluent in French, unlike General Grant, who had a terrible time with French. <laughs> um, and so he writes these very warm, endearing letters to her. And then the, uh, after those letters were concluded, after his premature death, after Smith's premature death, um, before the Battle of Shiloh, Oh, excuse me, after the Battle of Shiloh, he was not able to fight in the Battle of Shiloh. He, he, uh, <laughs> she tried to get this book published, and, uh, or a story written about him, and was unable to do so. But I trace her family and a little bit about her family's history, uh, and her, to her son, and the son of, uh, another son of, Smith's son, Alan Smith, spelled the same way as my name is. That's another reason I got kind of intrigued. Well, there's an Alan Smith. How weird is that coincidence? Yeah. And it was really fascinating. Uh, Alan Smith had a son, Charles Ferguson Smith the second, if you will. He went to West Point, finished last in his class, and received a dishonorable discharge from the Army. Oh. Now. Fanny's son uh, was Leslie Oliver. Fanny was married to, of all things, a professor at the U.S. Naval Academy. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sounds like today say, oh, come on, that can't work. Right. Well, not, not in those times. They were all friends, okay? <laughs> and or, uh, Smith had a lot of in-laws who were in the U.S. Navy. Well, he became an architect and a very, very successful at that. Uh, was in New York, designed several of the buildings there. And so you had this difference between two family members, one who was uh, extremely successful and one who didn't follow in his grandfather's steps as a military man. Yeah. But the stories are just, they're well, just wonderful. It, it's so cool, right? So what happened was is that Alan wrote this book, The Teacher of the <laughs> Civil War Generals. It was 300,000 words. The publisher looked at it and he was like, Alan, you're killing me here. There's no way I'm going to be able to make a book, write a book this long. You've got to yeah. cut it. And what happened was, is as you're cutting, you, you realize that there was a common theme for what you had to kind of take out of this story. And what you had was this. This I, I like to look at this as a combination of a little bit of historical text, but really it's just, it, it, it's a reproduction of a lot of the, the actual letters that were that were right. written right, right. And, and he named it your affectionate father Charles F Smith because that's how he signed every letters every letter to her they were very formal right they were they, it was much different but the message is very clear this guy this this very high level major general right was a father first he yes. adored his daughter. Right, so this message translates to a lot of you guys out there. It translates to Keith, who's got some daughters. It translates to you, right? Exactly. Who's, who's a who's a father himself, now a grandfather, and I and I think that even if you're remotely interested in the Civil War, you should get this book because you're going to understand more about the family values and the bonds that were existing hundreds of years ago that have paved the way for your relationship with your daughter. So go to Amazon right now and buy this book. Thank How was you. that? That was pretty good. Now, <laughs> if, you, if you like, uh, I dedicated the book to my daughter in keeping with your theme, and I wrote in a dedication letter to her, and of course I signed it, Your Affectionate Father, Alan H. Mesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just... It's so, it's so nice because I like when there is personability. Is that, is that a word, personability? And not personality that's different when you're talking about historical text. I feel like if it's not a word, personability just gives the human aspect to this very, a lot of people consider a very heavy subject, very tough, yes. tough subject to really sink your teeth into. But this gives me the human side 
the, the, the real side, right? Exactly. I, I know that personability is not a word. I, I tried to make it up. I'm gonna talk to <laughs> I'm gonna talk to Webster's next year to see if I can get it in. There's nothing worse when you're talking to a very s smart intellectual individual and you're saying things that don't make any sense and you're making up words. You really feel like a dumb guy. If the bow tie didn't do it, that that just did it, believe me. But but it's but you but I think you understand what I'm trying to say. Sure, absolutely. The more you can bring him history of life, the more people can embrace it and see. And these letters are just, you know, they're so dear to us. Uh, and I would, uh, when I would find one, I would go and grab my wife and say, hey, you've got to listen to this. this. Yeah. Oh my God, look at this. Listen to the description and listen to the tenderness and what he says to her about things. Um, and the, it's, so it's this constant Here's my story. Here's what Dad is doing at the office, if you will. And then I haven't forgotten about you. It's not just about me. It's what are you doing? How are things going in school? How are things with your brother and sister? So he's asking her about this and including them, uh, including her and his family. Smith is an incredible man. He is not the typical general. Yes, he is conceited. Yes, he has a high self-image. <laughs> but at the same time, he is a modest, he's considered a modest Christian gentleman. That phrase mm. is used about him time and time again. And if you read some of his reports, a lot of these military reports are, I did this, I did that, I did that. That's not Smith. He finds ways to give credit to other people. He opens up his description, his pencil description of the battle of Fort Donelson with the first paragraph talking about units that were assigned to him in his command but fought in other parts of the battlefield. So he had really no first-hand knowledge about them, but he says he's heard they do good work and he encouraged the reader to go and look at other officers' reports to get a fuller picture. Okay. What kind of a guy gives credit to other, other people, especially in a competitive military? Well, I mean, this is what kind of lends to, to, to my question. Is it because Grant was louder? Is that why he rose to the power that, that he did? That this Charles Smith may have actually been the one that should have been leading the Union Army, but because of the way Grant was, maybe he was a bigger personality, maybe he was louder about wanting to lead. Is there any, is there any validity to that? Well, I'll tell you, uh, William Sherman thought that was absolutely right, as well as Grant. Me and William Sherman. Mm -hmm. You and Bill Sherman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Grant was really, when they got together again at Paducah and Cairo, and Grant was like, oh my gosh, here I am, I'm superior to this guy, my teacher, the guy who I looked up to, I looked up to two people, Winfield Scott and C.F. Smith, and here I'm going to be talking, or here I'm his superior officer, my God, what am I going to do? First of all, Smith was delighted. He was happy that his protege did, was doing so well. And he told him, he said, don't worry about a thing. He says, I'm a military man. I understand rank and by position in it. We're going to be just fine. And they were. And he continued to mentor him, uh, even on his deathbed. And that was the humility from his side, right? If he's a different personality, it does not end harmoniously. No. There's no way it does. It doesn't. It doesn't. Even his relationship with Lou Wallace, and if you read historical accounts, Wallace was not real happy serving under him from time to time because he thought he was a little timid and he wanted to do some things and then Wallace got all mad because he got left at Fort Henry and didn't get to move to Dawson, but he got to Dawson with his own division and two days later. So it turned out okay and those weren't Smith's orders, they were Grant's orders. Now, after, when Wallace was writing about Smith, he says, I love the man as much as I venerated him. You don't see men at that time talking about loving each other right. without some real substance to it. Right. Uh, his uh, former soldiers in the 10th Infantry uh, 
regiment called him Uncle Charlie. There was a lot of love, a lot of respect. And he was a strict, strict disciplinarian. That's really cool. Mm. That's, That's really cool. Man. So the book, both the books, are available on Amazon. Uh, I hope you'll uh, take an opportunity to go and, and read about them. And you can also check out a little bit more about my biography and my background and all the places I've been and experiences I've had. Yeah, give me that website one more time. Do I want to learn about you? Learn about you? Uh, my website, my personal website is uh, alanmesh.com and I talk about my books and uh, what's going on in terms of future writing endeavors. I urge everybody out there, the easiest way to do, to get both of these books is just, just go to Amazon. But if you Google Alan's name or go to alanmesh.com, you're going to learn all about him too. And I, I urge you to do that because I just got a short time to learn and, and meet him. And I think that, that it's fascinating and amazing. I think you're doing great work. And I, I, want you, you, uh, I want you to keep it up. And I don't want you to slow down. I don't want you to stop. I know your wife is probably going to be like, look. You better, you better tell them to chill out. You better tell them to relax a little bit. But I, I think that what you're doing is just amazing stuff. And I hope that everybody out there uh, that is interested picks up the books, reads, gets in touch with you, tells you how great they are, and, and, and all of that. I really appreciate you spending a few minutes with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you're you. You're quite welcome. Thanks, Thanks. Pete. So that's going to do it for Morning Coffee this morning. We had a great one. We really appreciate everybody uh, watching. And, and uh we're going to keep doing it for you, so we, we hope everybody sticks around and, and watches. Make sure that you, uh, if you're catching us live now, you look down there at the bottom and you catch us on the archive for the next 30 days and, and okay. share them with your friends and, and, and tell everybody about what we're doing here because we're really happy about it and we're glad to bring you this stuff every single day. So that's going to do it for me. Keith, did I hit everything? We hit everything. Home run. Awesome. As always. That's great. Enjoy the rest of this beautiful day, everybody, and we will see you tomorrow. Have a great one.